Hi students, this video tutorial is going to walk you through the entire finale number four assignment, the Sousa March. Of course, there are directions on here that you can follow, and I highly suggest you watch this video tutorial, which will help to make it even easier. So let's get to work here. First, let's open up finale. In finale so far, we have looked at the templates and we've looked at the setup wizard. We're going to go back to the setup wizard today, but now we're going to create a new ensemble before we've used templates that they've already given us. Today we're going to create a new ensemble. So create new ensemble, hit next. And now we have all of the instrument families. So we're going to start in the woodwinds because we're going to keep this in score order. Now follow along. What I'm going to give you is slightly different than what you're going to actually see in the score. And that's fine. Just go ahead and do what I tell you and don't worry that it's different from the score. So we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to um, add a piccolo. There's one piccolo line. So double click to add. There are two flutes. Double click to add. There is, or there are two oboes. We're going to do a three B flat clarinet. We're going to not use the alto clarinet because I don't like that instrument. <laughs> um, we will, however, have a bass clarinet, one bass clarinet. There are two bassoons, double click twice. Then we get into the saxophones, scroll down. We're going to have two alto saxes. Aha. Now, if you look over, you'll see that it just inserted those saxophones above the bassoons. We don't want that. We want them to stay in store or score order. So with alto sax selected, here are these little arrows. Go ahead, just move that down. Move both those saxophones down. Oops, down, not up. Come back over and it will now attach to the bottom. One tenor sax, one berry sax. Don't worry about bass saxophone. Um, there are cornet parts. So now we need to change our family. Come over and click on brass. And here's our cornet, three of those. Then two tenor trombones right here. And that third trombone is actually a bass trombone. So we're going to go ahead and call it a bass trombone. And then the next thing it says is basses. A bass is actually a tuba. So we'll just add a tuba. And then we've got a little bit of percussion. So we're going to come down. There's both drums. Well, there's pitched percussion. Those are mallet instruments. And then you have drums and then you have more percussion. There's lots and lots. So you can always look through there to find the things you're looking for. We're going to add in um, drums, or in this case it's called a snare drum, and then a bass drum, and we're going to do single line. Now it says cymbals, bass drum on the same line. I will show you how to fix that once we get into the score. Next, the title is Washington Post March. There is no subtitle. The composer is John Philip Sousa, and it's transcribed by you. Don't worry about arranger, lyricist, forget the copyright. Go ahead to next. We are in 6-8 time. Please make sure that you select the correct time signature. Um, we're going to look at the score. Ignore that piccolo in D-flat. You definitely don't want to get your key signature from that because that's a transposing instrument. Make sure you come down here to first flute. That is in concert pitch, and so our key is one flat. We are only doing seven measures. We always specify initial tempo marking. This is a march, and a standard march tempo is 120, but your unit of measurement needs to be a dotted quarter. There is no pickup measure. Click finish. Now, this is going to be a big project, so give Finale a hot second to work through this. Notice it's still processing. Okay, now, here we go. Remember that you can hit Control Plus to make it larger for you. We're going to use our selection tool to move and clean up and get rid of things we don't need to see. 
And remember that copyright symbol is going to remain there. Okay, so first things first, we're going to add um, the symbol part to this bass drum. You may recall that anytime you want to edit a text box, you can just click on it. We're going to edit the staff name. And so we're just going to add a space and include the word symbols. And now that's correct. Now, a few things about this assignment, and uh, this is in the assignment instructions. I just want to point them out to you. Okay. Uh, we left out the piccolo and D-flat. We don't need that. We left out the alto clarinet. We left out the bass sax. The horn parts, as you look at the score, they've put two horn parts on one line. We have four horn parts. You know what? I didn't even put a horn part in. Look at that. I totally missed it. Well, I'm not going to redo this tutorial. So if no one has a horn part in, that's okay. It's about using tools. Oh, the third, third cornet part breaks into octaves. Don't worry about that. We're just going to put in one octave. Okay. This assignment is to show you the value of using copy paste and then also to give you a very basic instruction in working with percussion, percussion notation. So at this point, I'm going to pause my tutorial and I want you guys to go ahead and put in all of the notes and the articulation and the dynamics for the first flute. And you're going to head, go ahead and put that, put it right into the first flute part right here. Okay. So put all the notes in, put in the ties, and put in the accent on the last note in that seventh measure. Okay, I wanna say something about using a tie. There is a tie tool right here, but the tie tool requires you to select the tie tool and then put the note and then unselect the tie tool on the next note. I find that this is very inefficient. So when I do ties, I just go ahead and put the note in and then I use the slur tool. Now, when this prints out, no one will know that you used a slur tool rather than the tie tool. It will affect your MIDI playback. You'll end up hearing a re-articulation, but it doesn't matter to me and it saves a few keystrokes. So with that slur tool, just like all of the tools in this, in the smart shape palette, once you select it, you attach it by double clicking on the note. It lights up, drag it to the follow on note, make sure that note lights up and then let go. When you're done, of course, you have all of these little editing tools. You can change the shape of this and the curve. That will become especially helpful when you extract your parts and Finale decides to make everything look weird. And if you need to adjust things, that's where you do it. Okay, you can also just move this all around. But everything in the Smart Shape palette is applied in the same way. It's a double click, hold, drag, and then release on the other note. Okay. So that's how I do ties. I don't use the tie tool. I think it's cumbersome. I just use the slur tool. It changes how your MIDI will play it back because this note won't be tied. You'll hear a re-articulation, but that doesn't bother me. Copy paste is such an awesome tool in notation software. So you may notice that the first two measures are basically repeated. So we're going to go ahead and using that selection tool, select these two measures and then hit control C to copy, then come over here, hit control V and it copies it. And then articulation, remember this is our articulation tool right here, or it's actually the tool for attaching anything to the top or bottom of a note. Select it up there, come over here, make sure the arrow is pointing to the note to which you are going to attach the marking. And we are attaching this right here. Click select. There it is. Now, as you look down the score, you'll see that that accent changes a little bit. Don't worry about it. Again, for the purpose of this assignment, this is really about using um, copy and paste tools. So now that we've done that, now we're going to have a little bit of fun here. We're going to select that entire line of music. Oh, wait, we have to put in our dynamics. So dynamic tool right there. And we're just going to do... Um, Go up here to dynamics. Now keep in mind, all these tools, there's lots of tools when we do this. Any kind of tempo alterations, all of those are going to be in here. Okay. But we're going to just click on the dynamics tool. Double F. There it is. Okay. Now that everything's in that line, this gets really fun and easy. Using your selection tool, make sure you select the entire line of music, which you can if you get between the key signature and the time signature. Now everything is selected. Hit control C and then come up to your piccolo line and hit control V. 
and everything transfers over. Now, if it's in the wrong octave, while it's still highlighted, use eight and nine to get it to the octave that you need, okay? Um, and so we're just gonna work through here, just doing that, just pasting all the way through, and then adjust, adjust for octaves. So that needs to come down an octave, then we go to oboe, that works, uh, clarinet, that needs to go up the octave, Notice, once we get into transposing instruments, it does the transposition for you. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Bass clarinet, bassoon, and then he's go down the octave, alto sax, tenor sax, berry sax, and he's go down the octave. Coronet one, coronet two, third coronet, we'll just go ahead and put that, whoops, down the octave. Forgot the horns, that's okay. Trombones, go down the octave. Bass trombone, tuba, or basses. There we go. Okay, so that should all be done now. All right, so that takes us down to our percussion. Percussion notation is a whole thing, and you're gonna learn more about it for those who go into scoring and arranging. I also highly recommend for those who are composers or do a lot of arranging work, you need to just sit down and talk to a percussionist because there's a lot to percussion notation, but I'm gonna show you a few very, very basic things. Okay, so just like normal, you're going to select the duration of your note. Okay, so we have a quarter note, and you'll see as you scroll through here, different um, percussion instruments will pop up. Just ignore it. It doesn't matter. Just put it right on the line as you see it in the score. Now, in the snare drum part, that little grace note functions as an indication to a percussionist to do a roll. And so to do that grace note, just as you have done in the previous assignments with grace notes, here's your grace note tool right there. And we're going to do should be an eighth note grace note. So select eighth note, you've got the grace note. We're just gonna pop that right in there, okay? Then we've got some rests. Make sure grace note is unselected. Add your rests, quarter, that, oh, quarter rest. Quarter rest. And now another eighth note. There we go. Okay, now those two little slash marks that go through that rest, that is an indication for a roll again. But we need to attach it to the note. So you have to ask yourself, well, how do I attach something to a note? It's in your articulation tool right here. Okay, so select the articulation tool. There's the arrow, select. And we're looking for these two little slashes to add to the note. And there they are right here single, double, triple. These are also used for string tremolo. String tremolo. That's not going to se seem important now. For those who go into scoring arranging, you'll want to know that that's also a string tremolo. The point is getting slashes through a note, whether it's percussion or string or something else, it's found in your articulation tool. So we just need to double click and now it's attached. Okay, then we have a quarter note in the next. Great. And then you may notice that this repeats. So we can just control copy and then control V. And then here we go again. We've got a long roll right here. And use your smart shape tool. The smart shape tool disappeared. There it is. Use your smart shape tool. Whoops, I did half notes, didn't I? I'm making all kinds of mistakes. I blame it on the pandemic. 
should be a dotted half note. There we go. Um, use your smart shape tool to create the tie. So remember to double click, hold and drag, let that light up. And then we need to get quarter, an eighth note here, get rid of that dot. There we go. And then, hmm, my smart shape palette keeps disappearing. That tells me, reminder friends, go into edit, go into preferences, and palettes and backgrounds. Indeed, see how that's checked? So it keeps taking away my smart shape palette. Uncheck that, apply, okay. Grab that slur tool, double click, hold and drag, and then let go. Okay, we need to add this, the the uh, drum roll slashes to that. So articulation tool, arrows pointing to the right note. Come down. Scroll too fast. There it is. Double. Same thing here. Double. Okay. Uh. I'm going to be super lazy with you guys right now and tell you now that you know how to do the grace note uh, roll and then this, we are just going to, well, let's not be super lazy. That's a terrible thing. Um, let's go in and put in the bass drum. It basically just repeats itself. So quarter note. Okay, and then put an eighth note in. And then just a quarter note. Okay, now we can be a little lazy. Grab this, control copy, control V, and then quarter, eighth note, quarter, Eighth note, you don't even have to do that. It'll auto finish with rests. Selection tool, control copy, control V. Let's put an eighth note. And then as soon as we click away from this, it's going to auto fill that with rests. Ta-da, okay, now we're done. All right, oh, let's put a dynamic down in there. So dynamic tool, come down, make sure it's pointing to the right staff. Fortissimo, do the same thing, fortissimo. <gasps> okay, make sure you do fortissimo. I just clicked the wrong one, that's fine. Okay, so at this point, you should have everything in. So, um, ooh, little things like that. Watch out for that. See that selection tool? See how they're, they're crisscrossing like that? In a score, um, you still want to adjust that. And these are so easily fixed using the edit tool. You can just grab that edit tool. Let me zoom in to make this easier for you guys. Okay. So there's, here's the little boxes. So you can move that, but let's also just change the angle on that. There we go. Same thing here. Okay. When markings touch, it's just so unprofessional and it just really makes you look like an amateur. And the whole point of being great at notation software is um, doing your own work and communicating a level of professionalism to people who, who work with you. It's just such an easy thing to do to just make sure that things aren't touching. Okay, now I feel better about that. All right, so control minus, minus, minus. Okay, so now if you haven't already, Let's set up our file name for this because the next part, it's going to be crucial that you have the file name set up. So um, save as, make sure you pay attention to where you save it. Okay, this becomes the base file name for when you extract all of these parts. So save. Okay, so now we're ready to extract parts. So file extract parts. We already have the score. Leave it unchecked. Everything else should be checked and it will be. Click. Okay. Now this is the point at which things can go wrong. Things can lock up, but you've already saved it. So you're going to be just fine. 
Okay, so we let this work. And it, it takes a second here. It's doing a lot of work. So be very patient. Okay, now what you don't see is that behind this are many, many, many parts. I'm going to minimize. Now, this here is for your finale program. This here is for the specific part that you're in. You need to single, uh, yeah, you need to go through every single part and edit them to make sure they're okay. Okay, so this looks great. Once you've determined that this part looks great, go ahead and export it to a PDF. And then you can close it and you know you're done with it. So export uh, to PDF. And it comes up with that base baseline file name and then it says symbols and bass drum again make sure you are know where you're saving it and you might want to create a new file because this is you're gonna you have a lot of these you need to do so i'm going to create a new folder sorry create a new folder susa march select that folder it'll be really easy to find all these and then click save okay once you've done that and you've pdf that part let's clear it out so i'm going to come up here and hit x the smaller x it's going to ask me if I want to save my changes. Yes, I do. Click yes. Now it goes away. A new part arrives. Great. Snare drum. Looks good. Go ahead. Export PDF. Okay. Perfect. Great. Close this part. Yes, I want to save it. Keep going. Okay. So here we go. These oversized final measures. Oh, unacceptable. You will lose points on this. Using your selection tool, select that whole measure and just use your arrows on your keyboard and move it up. Either move it up or move half of the measures down. It doesn't matter, but you will not have oversized final measures. Okay. Now I'm done with that. Export, PDF, save, little x, close out this document. Yes, I want to save it. Move to the next one. And you're going to find that most of these have an oversized final measure. Look at that there though. See how those markings are touching? This is unacceptable. Click on that. Um, oh gosh, gotta be really careful what you click on here. Let me get bigger. Control plus plus. Okay. Um, right click. Now, there we go. Now there's our editing boxes. Move that down or just move the entire thing, but get it off so that nothing's, even this looks kind of weird in my opinion. So if you need to kind of adjust these, please do make it look professional for your musicians. Okay. Now I'm done with that file export, export, PDF, save. I'm done with this file X out. Yes. Save my changes and just keep doing this over and over and over again. Check your work, make sure everything's clean, export it to PDF save it, close that part file, and then rinse and repeat. And watch these. You just This is something you just need to get used to. When Finale exports and extracts into parts, lots of weird things can happen. So you're seeing how the slurs kind of always look junky and these oversized final measures. When Many other things can go wrong as well. Right click to get the edit boxes to pop up. Move that down. File, export, PDF, save, close. Okay. You have to do this now with every single one of these files, including the score, including the score. And then when you're done with all of it and you are ready to upload it to Canvas, you need to go to your, you'll come in here and you'll need to upload every single one of these. So, it's going to take a hot second, but this is good practice for working in large ensembles. This is what you would have to do anyways. Okay, my friends, so you now need to clean up every single one of these parts, get them PDF'd and saved, including the large score, and then upload those to Canvas. And then you have finished your semester with music technology. This is your final assignment. Thanks for a great semester, and I'll see you guys in the hall.